Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. A few hours ago, Ubiquiti released Unify Network Application 7.2.91, and this has a lot of features that people were requesting. There are also a lot of features that are still going to be unavailable until the Unify OS for the UDM SE or your dream machines get released. You may not see this in your Unify OS as being an update as it's still a release candidate, but it has been pushed to the public. You always need to be careful when it's a release candidate and I haven't done extensive testing on this as it just came out a few hours ago, so use at your own risk. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the new features and I'll show you in my UDM SE. I'll also show you how to get this release if you wanna push it out to your console. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you like live game streams, you could find me on Twitch about four days a week, and that will be in the description below. Now I'm going to show you how to update the network controller if you want to do that. Again, it is a release candidate. You would see that mine's up to date already, but we would go to our settings wheel and we can see that my network controller is on 72.91 and it's up to date. If yours isn't saying that there's an update available, you could always go to the Unify OS release channel, put it on release candidate, and then it will push it out to you. You could update and then you would want to put this back to official channel release now let's go over the improvements so the first improvement which is a very big one and a lot of people have been asking for is add local dns record support for our clients and let me show you how we do that so under our client page we need to pick one of our clients i'll choose my synology nas and we need to make sure that it has a fixed ip so we're going to go over to our settings wheel and we could see right below local dns record and it says, please enable fixed IP to assign the local DNS record. And that's what we'll do. So we'll click this toggle switch and then we're going to assign it whichever fixed IP you want. And then we'll do the local DNS record from here. They have an example at the bottom, but I'll just call my nas.mactelecom.com and then we'll apply those changes. Once the settings have been applied, we should be able to go to this host name and it will bring us to our NAS. Now the config is saved. Let's ping that host name. So we're going to ping nas.mactelecom.com. And we could see that the local DNS is working. It's pointing to 192.168.10.220, which is an awesome improvement. And I think will make a lot of people happy. Next, they add internet automatic speed test settings, which I'll show you in a minute. They add a tool tip for long names and settings tables. They add tool tip for fast ethernet and ethernet and internet speeds. They add toast for site exports and import actions. And then they add global network and switch settings. So I'm gonna show you this global network switch settings in the automatic speed test settings. So if we go back to our UDM SE and we click on our internet tab, we can see down at the bottom automatic speed test and we could enable that. Enabling this will let us put it on a schedule so we could do it either daily, weekly, or monthly. Another thing I noticed with this, and I'm not too sure if load balancing is working or not, but if you type load balancing in the search settings, it just brings you back to this page here. And we could also use different ports now for our backup WAN too. So default is port 10, the SFP plus, but we could have it on port eight or on port 11, which is very nice that they're giving us the flexibility to use different ports for our backup internet. Now, as in the last release, we had global settings for our access points. They're now pushing that out to the network and switch. So we have our global network settings, which will enable multicast DNS on all of these networks, IGMP snooping, and then the global switch settings, which has DHCP snooping, jumbo frames, flow control, spanning tree, 802.1x control, and then we have switch exclusions if you don't want them to be a part of the global switch settings. If we look at one of our switches, we could see here that it's using the global switch settings. If you don't want this specific switch to use it, we could just toggle it off and apply the changes. Next, it adds internet health section in the dashboard and it adds teleport clients overview to the teleport VPN settings. It also adds the WAN IP to the gateway overview side panel. They have an add time zone field for the cloud consoles and it adds Wi-Fi network column to the client's page. So let's take a look at the add Wi-Fi network column to the client's page the teleport and the internet health section in our UDM. Right from the dashboard, we can see the internet health and they have different timestamps. So this is 7.15 p.m., 1.15 a.m. and then now. We could also click on the internet quality. If we click on internet quality, we could see the WAN IP, the service provider, the location, download capacity, and then the upload capacity. And that could be changed under internet settings. And then we could see internet quality and it will show us the quality and latency in milliseconds and we could scroll through 
for specific times. We could also see internet event logs, which I don't have any, and then look at our insights. From our insights, it's gonna tell us a few things about the traffic. We have total traffic, we have download, and then we have upload and it will show us a graph of our traffic in megabits per second. And we could also do speed test settings right down below. Now for the teleport client overview, I think this is what they're talking about, which I believe was in the last update, but we could see that it's available for Mac OS, iOS, and Android. And we could click on each one of these and it will bring us to the Wi-Fi Man application. One big thing that was missing from the client's page was the Wi-Fi networks. And we could see that's been added and that's really great. We'd see most of the things on here are on Dolores, which are my IoT devices. Now let's run through of more of these improvements. So it adds region matching to traffic routes, but this requires UDMSE Unify Console 2.1.5.x or the other Unify OSs at 1.13, which is still in early access, so we won't be able to take a look at that. Also, it adds OpenVPN client support, which a lot of people have been requesting, but this OS version is still in early access as well. So once that does release, we will do videos on that. It adds Wi-Fi performance section. It adds the gateway IP to USW settings automatically if DHCP servers exist, adds connectivity monitor settings, and then it adds the speed limit for traffic rules, which is still in that 2.5.x early access OS release. So the Wi-Fi performance, we could go over to our Wi-Fi insights and then click on this performance tab. It's gonna show us the different signal strengths throughout the day and the TX retries. And we could also see the experience of the devices down below and the retries. We could see this Google Nest Mini has had a lot of retries, so I got to take a look at that. It adds a notification about gateway commit errors, and then it adds a warning about Wi-Fi needs to be provisions and clients may lose connectivity when editing Wi-Fi settings. It adds antenna gain for the UAP AC mesh, and it adds an error message when deleting a network that's referred by a Wi-Fi network. It improves system stability, and it also improves the reliability of the WAN failover events, but that is only available in the 2.5.x EA release. The last thing we're gonna look at is improve port insights UX. So if we click on one of our switches, I'll click on my USW Enterprise 24 and go over to ports, we could click on port management. Under this port management, this is where we could do all our configuration and we could select multiple ports if we want to configure them the same. But if we want to take a look at the insights of the ports, they have this insights tab. Under the insights, we could look over the overview. So this is the usage. We could click on packets and then we could take a look at our PoE usage. We could also switch a couple toggles. Right now it's showing all, but if we just wanted to look at the download or the upload, we could do that. On the left hand side, this is showing every single port, but we could deselect them all and then we could select the port that we want to take a look at and view the insights of that specific port. So that's going to be it for this video on Unify Network Application 7.2.91. Again, this is a release candidate. Once the new Unify OS 2.5.x comes out, I will do another video showing the OpenVPN settings as well as all the traffic routes. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.